this really is probably going to be the biggest summer transfer window for Manchester United that I can remember. Really, it might almost be an unprecedented amount of ins and outs at the club. And fullback, centre-back, we know it's a weakness at the club, but with such big priorities in midfield and up front, and probably a centre-back, are we really going to sign a fullback? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll sign Nordi Mukiele. The 24-year-old from RB Leipzig could well be leaving for a massive, massive cut price. In this video, I'm going to run through the full story of the Nordi Mukiele to Manchester United rumours that started back in December when Ralph Randnick came in to the point now where it looks like he's leaving Leipzig and United could really get a cut price deal for a player who could really come in and bolster this squad. Let's dive straight into it. Before I do, make sure you please subscribe to United People's TV by the end of the video. If you do enjoy it, if you do learn something, that's what these videos are supposed to do. Be informative and keep you bang up to date with everything that's going on. But the Mukiele story, it's well timed really because Leipzig's game at the weekend against Augsburg, he was in fine form. Playing as the right wing back for Leipzig, you can see there two assists for Nkunku. Well, that could be a little link up at Manchester United next year. I wouldn't mind that. Also, he won the penalty for Forsberg. So three out of the four goals that they scored in their must-win game of the weekend because Leipzig are chasing that top four spot. Mukiele was absolutely bang in form. But rewinding and looking where the story first began, we can go back to December. Well, Manchester United identified Nordi Mukiele as a transfer target following Ralph Rannick's arrival. Now, he's not the only RB Leipzig player that we've been linked with. I don't particularly think it's lazy journalism. I think it's kind of obvious. I'd almost be surprised if we didn't sign a player from RB Leipzig this summer. I'll run through all of them that we've been linked with, of course. Going back to February, BBC gossip page. It's gossip. It's Fitchages, which is the guff paper as far as stories go. That's why I'm only going to briefly touch on that. But we can go here to where we are now. This is the 9th of May. Manchester United are monitoring Nordi Mukiele. Uh, Foot Mercato reporting that Manchester United are monitor monitoring him uh, and manager and soon to be director Ralph Rennick is a fan of the Frenchman. Not the first time that we've heard that. And of course, not the last time. And then we fast forward to the, well, I say fast forward. We go to the next day. And this is the story that's coming out of Germany. Build are reporting that RB Leipzig will not be extending the contract of Nordi Mukiele. And that is where I believe it gets very, very interesting. Because if we were to take a look at this, this is his uh, profile over on Transfer Marks. Got him down as a £22 million defender. But there, right there, his contract expires next summer. So if RB Leipzig are going to get a fee for him, it has to be this summer. And that's where the links have really come from. And as I said, he's not the first RB Leipzig player. Three out of the four there have been linked with Manchester United. Conrad Lehmer, the defensive midfielder, and Kunku, the attacking midfielder striker, Mukiele there as the as the as the right back, and, and they're probably going to be more across the sea. It's, it, as I said, it's it's not particularly lazy journalism to link those players with us, and it's because our the person who's going to be helping steer our strategy moving forward is this man. Of course, if Ralph Radnick has his way, then Ralph Radnick will get Manchester United to go and probably sign somebody from Leipzig which of the players that we've been linked with from Leipzig do you think we actually will sign if we are to sign somebody now Mukiele is somebody who let's be completely honest it's not going to be top of it of anybody's list of signings that we could or we should be making and if we take a look at the positions that he's played this year he's played the majority they've got him down as a defensive midfielder on the right but it's basically a right wing back inside that 3-5-2 system that Leipzig use. Played also six times on the right. He's actually played as a right side of midfielder. He is a right back come centre back. That's where he's confident. And if you have a look, quick listen to this interview, this is what he had to say about what he sees as his actual preferred position. Striker. Striker. <laughs> no, I am both uh, right back or centre back. I love uh, both. So I prefer to play right back. Yeah. And if we're looking at Manchester United's squad, right, and we're looking at weaknesses, you're definitely going to say right back. You're definitely going to say left back. Hell, the, the list of strengths is shorter than the list of weaknesses at Manchester United. It really, really is. But a player like Mukiele, if you take a look here and you look at his overall career stats, he's played over 100 games at right back, but also 40 games as a right wing back and also 60 games as a centre back. That is a versatile, versatile player. I suppose you can get some sort of similarities-ish to Urien Timber. 
Uh, Ajax, of course, we've been linked with him as well. Somebody who's very comfortable playing right back and also as a right-sided centre-back. And Manchester United need this summer to make smart signings as much as we need to make the right signings because too often we've signed the wrong players at the wrong time. Uh, it's just not really worked out for us, has it? This summer, someone like Nordi Mukiele, as I said, is, is not going to be a name that was on anybody's list. Sorry, I'm putting something up on the screen here so I can pull it up for you. It's not going to be a name that was on really anybody's list. But the more you look into it, the value of the signing, the versatility of the player, the experience he's got inside the Bundesliga, you could really, really see how Mukiele could be part of a wider summer strategy that could see Manchester United really, really improve our overall squad. Now, if we were to take a look at what sort of player he is, I mean, the, the stats sort of support the fact that he's been playing as a right wing back. You go down here, look at that. His non-penalty expected goals are actually top 4%, which means he's probably missing a few chances. Shots, top 10%. Non-penalties, non expected goals and assists. Look, touches in the in the attacking penalty area, top 4%. A very, very aggressive and forward-thinking right wing back. 20%, uh, top 20% for progressive carries, but look, not particularly progressive passes, sorry. Not particularly good for pass completion. I'd say pretty damn poor for pass completion, really. Interceptions is all about reading, reading the uh, spaces between players and intercepting the ball rather than lunging in with a tackle. And aerials is a big dude, man. He's like, what is he, six foot two, I think he is. This is a sort of signing I can look at and go, you know what? It makes a lot of sense. And I'm actually going to do a separate video here on United People's TV uh, where I'm probably going to be looking at smart signings that I think Manchester United should be making because it, we have to make smart signings this summer as well as making good signings. It, it's not just all about, um, as I said, it's not just about the marquee names anymore. And if, if we're looking at spending 50 to 60 million on, on a proper central midfield powerhouse, if we're looking at spending 60 to 80 million on a out and out striker or somebody who's going to bring goals to the team, and we're going to be looking maybe at spending 40 to 50 on a centre back, we won't really have any funds to try and go out and sign a right back, even if we did need one. And that's where someone like Mukiele could make sense. There's, it's opportunistic. In the same sense that signing Donny van der Beek was opportunistic. It's a shame that that's worked out how it has so far. Let's see what goes on under this bloke. But this makes a lot of sense. It's the versatility. If we were to, if we were to take a look at, at compare him to other defenders in the league, obviously Cancelo and Trent, they're leading the way. But how does he stack up there against Diogo Delo? These are his, these are the passing attributes. And he's not particularly, as I said, strong in terms of the average passing, the passing percentage. If we were to take a look at how he is defensively, you go down here, yeah, same amount of goals, roughly not, not particularly, he's not particularly hugely impressive anywhere. He's not particularly hugely weak anywhere. I would say he, he just looks like a player who could bring some sort of consistency to a role, which let's be honest, has been absolutely tragic. There was a period under uh, Ralph Rennick when I was quite happy with Delo and Tedders. I thought, you know what? That could actually work. If Manchester United could somehow, Wan-Bissaka goes to Crystal Palace on loan for a season before moving back there on a permanent deal, opens up a spot in the right wing back, right back position for Manchester United, someone like Mukiele, who could come in and offer a versatility at right back and also at right centre back. And then maybe we bring someone like Ethan Laird back off loan. That's a new look right back situation for Manchester United. And obviously Diogo Delo, you can throw him in there, but I don't think he'll be here in a couple of years. I think he'll probably be replaced. So I'm not going to say in any way, shape or form that this bloke coming into Manchester United changes everything for this club. He's the sort of signing that, oh my, oh my God, incredible. But it's the sort of signing where you look at and you go, you know what? That makes financially a lot of sense. But look, and I suppose that shouldn't really matter to us as fans, but it matters to the club. And in reality, those two things have to align for transfers to happen, right? Leipzig signed him for like 16 million back in 2018. And the price getting linked with him and a move to Manchester United is 10 million pounds. That could be a very, very smart signing. As I said, I don't think it's particularly lazy journalism to lick, link a player like Mukiele to Manchester United in the same way it's not particularly lazy to link Nkunku or Lema because this man will be leading 
at least part of the direction that we want to be going towards. And United have to make these sorts of smart signings, squad smart, smart squad signings on top of really top level, exciting signings of youngsters that can be hungry at the club and over the next two, three years can progress. And then the marquee signings on top of that. They're all different types of signings. We've got to get it all correct. But if this man has his own way, we'll definitely sign in somebody from Leipzig this summer. And maybe it'll be Mukiele. It's an interesting one. I hope I've covered it all for you in this video so you understand a bit more about him. And as I said, this is the summer that he has to be sold by Leipzig if they want to get any money for him. If they don't, he'll leave on a free transfer next year. That means Leipzig will sell him because they're not going to extend his contract. He'll leave this summer. Will he be to Manchester United though? That's the question. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below as you always do. But Mukiele, I think it's a conversation that we definitely should have.